All right, we got Roycey in here. Um, you can find everything we and or Judd and or Roycey does by himself or on other platforms on the Roycey Unchained podcast feed, by the way. Apple, Spotify, scorenorth.com. Last 10 games, Patrick. The last 10 games, Anthony Edwards is averaging point point guard or whatever you want to call him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, driver of the offense version of Anthony Edwards yeah. averaging 29 and a half points, eight rebounds, Five assists on 48% shooting. They did have a six-game losing streak in the middle of that. That is I true. Believe, <laughs> I believe there was the two-game streak when Gobert and Russell were both out, right? And Anthony, didn't they win two in a row? And Anthony ran the offense completely because Russell wasn't playing. Then they got Russell back and started doing the same old crapola. And uh, lost, uh, had the six game losing streak, but uh, he was uh, unbelievable yesterday, last night in the second half. Those last two hoops he made on those drives, did you see those? Oh that my was God. Unbelievable. Play. Euro step, traffic, trees, everything. Yes. <laughs> it was, those were two amazing hoops that uh, basically pulled that game out for him. So he's. Uh, Overall, you'd have to say he's enjoying not having Cat on the court, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you say that? I mean, enjoy. Uh, yeah, it's wor- it's working better for him. That's and what I'm saying. May- I don't know about the team yet, but for him, it's yeah. working better without Cat. Yes. Yes, and uh, uh, I, I will say this: after the thing with Detroit last Saturday, right? Last Saturday night, one of the worst losses of all time. I was getting ready to uh, disembowel the fellas with a column sometime this week. So I went Monday and they, yeah, they won. I said, I'll ah, wait till they really puke it up on Wednesday against, uh, against Portland. And now, uh, now we put it off in the front burner because uh, it's off the front burner now because, uh, you know, that last night was uh, pretty good. I thought they, that's a, that's a pretty good team. And uh, they actually guarded Lillard to some degree. And uh, that was a good win. And, you know what's been uh, notable? Now, I was there Monday and then last night just watching, but the crowd has been in it, you know, into it. They We're chanting Rudy. Yeah, We're chanting Rudy. Rudy. <laughs> yes. They, the, because of last season, we have a Timberwolves crowd showing up that wants to be happy. Now, they've been booing the hell out of them when they stink. But that's good, right? That's good that they're involved. They, it does yes. seem to be somewhat of an involved crowd who just, not just people whose friends had extra tickets. And said, <laughs> you, know, you want these, you know, somehow my company got stuck with season tickets. Do you want eight? You know, even though you only have two kids. Uh, so it's a, it's a been a different kind of crowd, certainly the last couple of nights. And I think that in general, it's been a kind of an involved crowd. You know what struck me? Uh, what game was it that he had a chance to, uh, uh, Anthony had a chance, it had to be two weeks ago, had a chance to get a triple double and, uh, and, yes. and, uh, Reed, Nas Reed missed the three pointer and the crowd knew that, that he had a chance to get a, at least a good section of the crowd down in that one end zone was madder than hell that they were taking him out of the game and that the shot was missed. They were aware that uh, he would have gotten an assist on the Nas Reed three and would have had a triple-double. And that kind of said, why wow, that? Because generally, they'd all be gone by that point of the game. <laughs> so it was, uh, they're kind of an involved crowd, I'll say that. They want, them, they want this team to make them happy. And I, I think 90% of that, Edwards, don't you? I think 90% yes. of that team's popularity right now is Anthony Edwards. Agreed. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. I mean, he's he's bounced back from his uh, uh slur and uh he's he's uh you know he's 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 gotta be at the all-star game, doesn't he? He's gotta be, right? I mean, if he keeps doing what he's been doing the last 10 games, he's uh-huh. yes. I I yeah. would think absolutely. Even last night, while well, Austin Rivers was even saying last night, you know, I've played with a lot of different star players, and this this is what a star player looks and feels like, maybe even more so. And he said, I'm paraphrasing here, he's 21 years old, but he's so likable 
we all love the guy so much that even when he makes mistakes, no one really gets mad at him. We just start, and he listens when you try to, yeah. you know, instill advice and stuff. So he is, I think, I think his teammates love him. I think you know, outside oh, of, like you said, go. the slur, I think Pat's cutting out. We can just put Pat in the green room there for a second, Dex. Um, just, yeah, there we go. I think, I think he's right, though. I think Anthony Edwards is sort of the the thing that holds all of this together, even when they lose six straight games and Wolves fans are wondering, you know, here we go again, Judd. Here's my question for you. If there's a chemistry problem here, which which from what Dukes has said, there definitely is. How much is D'Lo just a problem? How how much of this like like because we talk about Cat, you know, and I understand that the Wolves aren't better without Cat, but the pouting of Cat gets to be old. Um, how much is D'Lo just in the last year of his contract too? How much is he just a problem? How how much does he kill joy what a guy like Ant tries to bring? Yeah. See, I think he's more of a basketball misfit than he is like a chemistry or attitude misfit. Okay. Although last night was interesting again, you know, he sat at the end of the game. He made one shot all game. He sat at the end. Mm-hmm. He unfollowed the Timber. I think Pat's back here. He unfollowed the Timberwolves on Instagram. I don't know if you guys saw that one time in the last 48 hours. Delo's done with D'Angelo Russell has unfollowed the Timberwolves on Instagram. I love this. What what, what is that about? Who's he mad at? He's making $30 million a year and they're playing him. Well, I mean, you added up. They had a closed-door, players-only, contentious meeting before the Nuggets game. D'Lo had an illness and didn't play in the Nuggets game. He then he then retweeted someone that said like bet on yourself or something or reposted something that was bet on yourself, and he unfollowed the Timberwolves on Instagram all in the last seventy two hours. And throw in the mysterious Nas quote of "We know what the problem is." Yep. We're just not saying it what it is. Now that would be jumping to a long uh, range conclusion, but uh, yeah. I don't think did... they hate D'Lo by any means. I think he's no. a, he's an affable enough guy. I don't think, if anything, it's like it's like a basketball chemistry non fit with what they're trying to do with Ant. But now yeah. I heard of Horton. I was in the car for a while when the game started last night, and Horton. I was doing a Horton and. Horton was talking about the D-low pick and roll. And he was talking about how it's been effective for Russell, but he never looks for the roll. He never looks for yeah. Gobert then rolling to the basket. Now that isn't Gobert's number one strength, rolling to the basket. But the object of the pick and roll is if the guy who makes the roll is open, you throw him the ball, right? And, uh, and Horton, who's pretty damn candid, I love him, uh, said, you know, he just doesn't take advantage of, uh, of the second part of the play. And this yeah. was five minutes into the game. So. Finch noted that, too, in his post game last night. He was talking about, so Finch was on the Houston Rockets staff, like, however many years ago, when they brought Dwight Howard in. Mm-hmm. And he said it took that team half a season to figure out how to throw lob passes on pick and rolls and, like, the <laughs> timing of it and everything else. So maybe that's coming at some point this season. Maybe maybe the unlocking of the the lob to Rudy Gobert, but apparently it, it takes a while when you're trying to and he and Finch also said, you know, the rest of these guys, D'Lo and Ant and even like Jordan McLaughlin, they haven't had a, just a vertical lob roll man in three years. They have more of the pick and pop guy and cat or Nas. And so they aren't even like looking for it as much as they should instinctually. But I would say, all right, it's been about 40 games now. We should probably start looking for the gigantic seven footer with his hands in the air near the basket. But yes, see. that's uh that, that is uh, absolutely 100%. But it, it's, uh, you know, Hey, they, after that thing last week, uh, you, you wondered if, if, if it was going to become a, complete train wreck and Edwards has not allowed that to happen. And what's funny is, is he's had terrible starts in both games uh, the yeah. last, uh, in this two game winning streak. And he owned the second half uh, uh, when they won on Monday and he owned the second half again, Wednesday. Now I thought Denver was, uh, you know, kind of an indifferent guy. Uh, we didn't get Denver. We didn't get a fully engaged Denver team on Monday night, but uh, last night I, I liked that Portland team. They got that big monster in the middle. And one of the best backcourt backcourts there are. I love Anthony Simons, and uh, you know they they held him down and they Lillard Lillard missed shots and they won a game. So what the hell? Everybody was happy. Hey, Prince is back. Tayshawn Prince is back. Roycey, 
Hey, he played good too, don't you think? He actually had one of his best, most effective yeah, games as a But I'm just player. saying he's back at all. Are you trying to are you trying to poke the bear here? It felt like it had been months. It felt 20, like it had been a long time. Then uh sometime 20 games, 20 some games, right? Yeah. 20 some games, I think. So what are you insinuating, Judd? Patrick had said for a long time, when is Prince coming back? And I just said he's back. He's finally back. Royce yeah, is well, good. I, I want you know what? When guys miss that much time, I want something broken. I don't want. <laughs> I don't want what about a torn. Be what about torn? I don't want torn. Is good. I'll take torn. <laughs> it's got to involve torn, some type of like obvious broken. cast. It can't be a strain, okay? It can't be a strain, or it can't be a uh, you know just a twist. I want something broken. You know. It, uh, that, that I can't stand that. Uh, what about partially? T- Brian O'Neill's about to miss, you know, the yeah, rest well, of the season with a partially the, torn Achilles. That's surgery, so that counts. That's, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that okay. Yeah, yeah. Achille, anything involving the Achilles, you know, that's it's hard to play a game with on one foot. I'll, I'll admit that. But uh, would you rather have Brian O'Neill on one foot or Ole Udo against the the Giants in the first round of the playoffs? Wow, they're uh, if if the guy on the left side. Uh, doesn't turn into what he was, Darisau. Oof, boy, that's going to be something. I, uh, the, the Bears, the Bears want to lose so bad they're not even uh, uh, going to let Fields play, right? And uh, yeah, and still, uh, <laughs> Nathan and Peterman, still, he'll be yeah, fine. Yeah, Nathan Peterman, former Bills great, wasn't he? Uh, didn't he get to yeah. start a few games? Yeah, he threw five picks in one half one time <laughs> uh, with the Buffalo. Right. Yes. I remember him. He is the ultimate tanking team's secret weapon. Yes. We're gonna we're gonna unveil Nathan Peterman in week 18. <laughs> and of course, uh, I think Fields uh had passed for 76 yards on uh, last uh, Lavelle and I, Lino Lavelle, Mr. Uh Mr. Bears lover, is is all in on Justin Fields. His his co- his tweet of a month ago is he's gonna be the best quarterback in the NFC Central next year. He wouldn't have started at Ohio State. He wouldn't have beat out Stroud. Stroud would have, he would have been sitting on the, they would have made him a wide receiver if he was at, at Ohio State because he wouldn't be able to play with Stroud playing. So anyway, that's. Uh, I saw a tweet, Pat, that, that th- there was actually, that call was made to a Chicago sports show. I think in the last two days, someone saying that they should draft a quarterback and move fields to receiver. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's already being thrown out there in Chicago. God, I love football fans. I was saying it cynically about it moving to. I know you were, but but it's nice that it's a it's a real uh, legitimate uh, situation. This is a uh, this is you know O'Neal is pretty well a disaster for this team, wouldn't you say? I mean that's yeah. that's big. oh yes that's huge. You know that's that, that on is, top of the yeah. fact that you have a struggling rookie right guard and as mm-hmm. of right now a. Th- third string center that has never played before until last week or a guy off the street that hasn't really been effective in six years. Those are your center. Well, those, those two guys they brought in or were, were neither any place this year or were they did, were they uh, Greg Mance, the center played like 22 games for the bills in one game. I think mm-hmm. 22 plays, 22 plays in one, 22 game. plays. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's uh you know, I'll, I'll, Whenever I'm asked how a football team is going to do, when the year starts, I always say, tell me how many injuries they're going to have. If they're going to lose two starters, if the Vikings are going to lose two starters with that team. Well, they've already had a good year. But if you're going to lose two starters, you're going to be fine. If you lose six, you're not going to be fine. And they're getting closer to six than they were two now. So it's yeah, it's, uh, it's rough. It's, you start getting banged up and – and the NFL solution for this is let's try to add one more regular season game. How about them? Why are they so fixated on having to play this Bengals Bills game that they might delay the playoffs for a week? There, I, I would think they're not going to at this point, right? They can't. The TV is going to say, "Are you nuts? What are we supposed to do yeah. with that weekend?" You know, yeah. what are we supposed to do with that weekend? Okay, right? Just declare it a no contest, and and that's. That's the Bills' problem. The Bills' problem, they they can't get – if Kansas City wins, they can't get home field if, if, because this game is no contest. The Bills will accept that, I would think. That, you know, they they're, they obviously don't want to resume until this kid 
you know, is, is walking out of the hospital. But, uh, yeah. but the idea you're going to delay the season because you had uh, a one in a, you know, once in a generation thing that stopped the game uh, is, is just idiotic. But they're, they're treating this thing like it's sac- sacrosanct that they got to get them all played, right? I think they love saying, we got all our games played. But uh, yeah. And if the, think- if, if, the, if the Bills don't care, which they don't, yeah. Then just make it a no contest. The, it's not yeah. like the Bills are banging on there saying, wait a second. No, no, no. We want another shot. No, just. Yes. They can be the number two seed. They'll they'll be fine. I wonder they if they care. feel like they're giving those teams an advantage by not playing, making them play two and a half quarters or three quarters or something. I, I don't know. They're, when do they just. What, when do, do we get the official decision for that? Like at some point in time, they're going to have to just say, we are proceeding with the season without that game. Yes, they should have said it by now, don't you yeah. think? They said it's not going to be played this week. When they say it's not going to be played this I week, agree. it's not going to be played. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. You know, let you know, it, it's just it's the roll of the dice that you end up playing 16 games and the and the Kansas City plays 17 and if they win 14, you don't make you don't get the home field. That's it's that simple. By the way, so, Ian Rappaport has a, a further update here on the Bills sent out a, a little bit more of a vague update that he's that DeMar Hamlin's made extraordinary progress. Uh, Ian Rappaport is more specific here. He says DeMar Hamlin opened his eyes last night and is responsive. Truly incredible. Um, that's really the update. He opened his eyes and is responsive last night. I did a so, thing on uh, I did a thing on for Wednesday on some couple of kids up in the trainer who had those kind of, you know, have had the traumatic injuries. And one of the kids is still in recovery, but the guy in 2007, who's now a dentist in St. Paul, Tyler Jensen, they put him in the air ambulance to uh, North Memorial and told the coach he had a 10% chance to survive. And the coach drove down to see him the next day and he was sitting up in bed because they went in, opened up his skull and did the surgery saved his life put yeah. the piece back in there and uh you know he's now fully functional now the other the other kid hasn't been as lucky so far but uh it's uh modern medicine baby they can do a lot to keep you alive it's incredible yeah, man. Yeah. it's incredible so it's amazing it, yes uh how about our wild man holy cow this <laughs> is a machine vegas comes in here hotter than hell they beat them bloody five to one Tampa Bay. It? Tampa Bay. Oh, Tampa. Oh, I thought it was Vegas. Oh, no. Okay. Well, Lightning. Tampa. National TV. Been. Didn't matter who it was. It Could have been anyone. Would have gotten served. Me. The 830. I do not. I think Did you see? 852, Royce. That sucker didn't start till 850. Or yeah, well, 855. Yeah, that's a, when they say 830, it means whenever we want to start the damn thing. Yes. I say we pass a state law. But now that we got, now that the DFL is in charge here, of all things over at the Capitol, you cannot for TV. If if you normally start at seven, and TV suddenly you're in the playoffs, and TV wants you to start on at nine ten or something, can't do it. It's against state law. You have to start by eight oh five. This That's is something it. that all I think all politicians can get behind. This right yes. of all the things okay. that we all disagree well, about. Uh, we knows. don't. You know, public safety demands that we start at 8.05 p.m. And hockey, it should be 7 because those guys, once you get to the playoffs, they could be playing until 4 in the morning anyway. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, that game started at 9.52 Tampa time. Yes. It started at 10 o'clock, basically, Tampa cool. time. What was it on? NHL Network? TNT. Oh, okay. I could. That's the other thing. You can't. What? Such and I have the same problem. <laughs> if they aren't on the BSN, we don't know where the hell to look for them. Who's the one they have the? Uh, who's the one the NHL has uh, the deal with now? Amazon or Apple or ESPN who? Plus? Uh, aren't they're gonna go to? I thought they were on. Did they have a? I thought they had a game on Amazon or Apple or something. MLB like, has an Apple game. And MLS went to Apple exclusively. Yeah, yeah. But the yeah, NHL those... is is TNT, ESPN. Okay. Well, I didn't find them last night. I was looking around. Oh, the, well, I, you know, I started. You texted me. Just call me. 
Yeah, yeah, I could have figured out where it was. Were you, I stayed you were, home. Were you there? You no, didn't. no, Too at late. nine o'clock. I ain't no. I'm fifty three. I gotta plus get to was, bed. Plus, it was no snowing again. This has been a three shoveler. I've already been out there twice, and I gotta go do it again. He care. There's got to be someone in the neighborhood that can help you at this point, Pat. You're, well, I guess you've, you've paid your shoveling dues for decades. There's only two inches of snow out there left because I shoveled like yeah. at nine last night. That was heavy, by the way. Last yeah, that's night. Hard. Last Small night poop, Pat. usually takes me five minutes. Took me about 15 because that was one of those <laughs> two shovels. Take a minute break. I don't want to. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be the fat guy laying in the snow face down. <laughs> no, not face down anyways. That's, that's such a cliche, I, right? Face I'm up not, will preserve some dignity. I'm not going to get the I'm not going to get get the attention that uh football players do if I'm laying out there for 3 hours or something. No, so, you're not. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, enough man. of this snow. Just think of what I was thinking of what's it like in Buffalo? They've had this much. Oh, gosh. They've had three times this much snow in two oh, weeks. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Your house is just collapsed, I guess. This is, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Every every time I'm out there shoveling, I keep saying, should I really have sold that condo? <laughs> That's right. What were you thinking? Go back to Fort Myers. Right. Who cares about <laughs> snakes? You know, uh, you know, who cares about snakes? Alligators. Totally worth it. Yeah. All right, Pat, we uh, we got to run. We will talk to you again tomorrow, sir. All right. See you later. Goodbye. All right. There All he right. is, Roycey. Uh, Roycey Unchained podcast feed. And you can also find him on the Score North YouTube channel. See you guys.